Hello, I welcome all of you to today's session of Visual J Forex, in which we are going to get acquainted. We will try to understand and uh, see the functions and uh, how we can implement it on the Visual J Forex as well as on the J Forex. The T3 is uh, an indicator developed uh, just 20-25 years back, and it is uh, an indicator which is uh, widely used. And uh, this is uh, an adaptation after incorporating EMA, double EMA, and triple EMA. As you can see from this short description, it incorporates a smoothing technique which allows it to plot uh, curves which are more gradual and uh, more smoother, and also with a smaller time lag. Yesterday's um, indicator, the SMMA, was uh, plotting the smoother curve, but there there was a wide uh, time lag and uh, this indicator the T3 tries to eliminate the time lag and it tries to move with the price action while at the same time keeping the fluctuations in check and it tries to plot and uh, smoother curve and uh, to do that it uh, gives it uh, utilizes the weighted average of the EMA DEMA double EMA and the PEMA that is triple EMA and uh, as uh, most of the traders are aware when there is a uh, particular uh, trend in the any underlying instrument the price action mostly will try to stay the course and it will continue to move in uh, the direction of the trend but once in a while the reversals do happen and uh, sometimes there is not much in trend the movement is choppy and uh, to kind of uh, avoid the situations where there is not much of a price action and uh, the markets are choppy to avoid losses we can uh, fairly rely on the t3 and uh, there are some techniques which uh, we can employ on the charting and while developing the visual j forex platform based uh, algorithm which then we can uh, use for automated trading and uh, we will also see various uh, ways in which we can uh, deploy this uh, tool, the indicator on uh, the platform and how we can build a profitable algorithm. Let's add the T3. It is part of the MA series as it is based on the moving averages. So here it comes. We have seen most of these indicators in last uh, webinar stations now today is the turn of t3 and we are pretty much in the fag end of our series involving the moving averages in later stations we will take a look on the tma trima tsf variance volume wap and wma now for the day we focus on t3 so let's get started as uh, you might be already aware, all you have to do is join the start point. Start points are essential. And the start point can be one or all three or any of three. Then we have to take a look on the input parameters. Then you get the output parameters. Based on how you define these input parameters, you will get the output value. Anytime you feel confused, you can just simply click on this info section and you will have this uh, brief description for the indicator T3 we have already seen. We will not really go into the calculation, the mathematical formula here as uh, we are not going to be calculating it manually and uh, simply to uh, fulfill uh, your curiosity, you can just do Google or any search and you will find the formula and it is uh, fairly easy to understand and uh, for us the calculation will be done by the automated setup which we are going to develop on this uh, visual j forex platform and all we have to do is uh, see its charting and how to deploy this tool in the automated setup so that we don't really have to watch the screen all the time so here I have already plotted the T3, the input parameters, defi default time period has been defined at 14 and uh, this uh, second value you are seeing of 0.7 that is the volume factor, V factor. Here these are default values and uh, 
you have to customize these values as per your requirement and for that what kind of value to use uh, to determine that you will have to do the experimentation the trial and error thing and also see how it is looking at the chart and then you can uh, customize the indicator as per your requirement now let us try to understand it on the chart and uh, this is one of my favorite tool as well in uh, most of the moving averages of course I shouldn't be choosing one over the other but even uh, if we are to going to use any moving average tool which uh, doesn't have much of an lag for the price action then uh, this is one of the indicator which doesn't really have much lag between the price action it tries to follow the price action uh, very sharply and uh, tries to close start sharp and uh, closer so here this is the t3 defined for hourly time frame the time period calculation is of 14 and the v factor is uh, 0 0.7 now we have to design and define these input parameters and what parameters to use for that you will of course have to do some experimentation here we try out different values for example we try out 30 and then you can see from 30 you have the different output values here and of course as I said the values are fairly smooth you get uh, a nice curve here which is uh, first it is going upward and then as the price action turns choppy with uh, bearish bias we get this uh, slope on the downside and as the price action crosses above it we get a reversal here and uh, in no time the curve again turns on the upside so here this uh, indicator is uh, of a lot of use for any trader who wants to automate the setup and uh, you want to trade with the trend as uh, you can see as you can see from the charting any change in the trend any deviation on the other side of the trend will be quickly reflected in this uh, chart and uh, on the visual jforex platform as well so there are a couple of ways in which you can uh, deploy it and uh, one of the way is that whenever the price action the candle close uh, happens to be on the other side of the trend suppose here for example the price action was on the bearish side and the t3 value was falling and then we saw eventually here the last hour candle close happened on the upper side but even after that the price action turned bearish and then eventually it made a again the reversal and uh, then this time around it uh, managed to stay the course and it uh, closed above this uh, t3 and eventually the t3 changed course so you can uh, take cluster of uh, historical candles and say that you want a couple of candles to have closed above this t3 and uh, prior to that the change was on the opposite side the trend was on the opposite side so you can uh, that way define the initial initiation of a new trend and uh, as and when the price action changes and you will get a head start as the earlier trend was on the bearish side and now you have got on the bullish side so that way uh, you can get involved during the initial hours of the trend one other uh, approach is to simply compare these uh, t3 values to the prior uh, values so suppose if you are taking the current value of t3 into account then you go back in time say 10 hours 15 hours or whichever time amount you want to choose you can choose that as a look back period and then you can do the comparison if the values are on the rise then you can consider the underlying momentum to be on the bullish side if the t3 values are falling that will indicate that uh, the underlying price momentum is on the bearish side and also uh, with that you can also rely on the last hour's candle close whether it is on the bullish side or on the bearish side and as i said even if the t3 values are falling then you see that price action is uh, 
shifting on the higher side and it is the it has crossed above this or it has fallen below the t3 whereas the t3 was uh, in the opposite trend then also you can uh, uh, design this uh, algorithm with uh, the setup that if such kind of contradictions crack creep up or uh, you come to four you can simply avoid trading or uh, as you can see here other, earlier the trend was bullish and then the price action turned bearish so you can uh, use this as a initiation tool for a sell trade and here the price action was bearish the t3 was bearish and then the price action eventually turned uh, bullish and it went here so during such time you can try to initiate the bullish trades the long trades so both ways you can use that and uh, to do that all you have to do is customize these input parameters the time period can be anything from uh, 10 seconds to 10 minutes so all you have to do is uh, choose these uh, parameters wisely and uh, what kind of uh, setup will work better you have to do a lot of historical testing for that and uh, with that you will get the get the idea of which time frame is likely to work better and uh, what kind of setup to develop so you have to rely on the testing even four hourly can be done and uh, as i said it depends on uh, your requirement and on which time frame you are going to trade the shift for the current value to be taken into consideration the shift needs to be kept at zero if you want to use the historical t3 values for two hours back then you will have to use the shift uh, 2 while defining this time period at 2 hours. Now, if we use uh, shift 2 with a combination of 4, then we will be getting the output value of 8 hours back. Then comes the time period on which the T3 will be calculated. As I said, this is uh, crucial here for the chart. On the chart, we were looking at the time period of 30 hours and uh, for 30 hourly time frame you get this kind of curve and if you now make this 4 hourly you will have detection of the trend which is uh, for the longer duration so as you can see the trend changed when we saw this uh, cross above and sustaining of the price action above this uh, t3 on the 4 hourly time frame then as uh, you can see from here the t3 values or were on the rise on the four hourly basis then the price action went closer and it sustained there and eventually we have got a break on the upside so that's how you can use this combination you have to see what works best for you and sometimes the price action is choppy as you can see from here the underlying trend was on the bearish side but then the price action started to crop above this uh, t3 value and because of that the curve almost flattened but eventually we saw a break and here the t3 value started falling and then it went to a steep decline so the t3 followed suit and uh, here we got the reversal now the price action is holding up so that's how you can use this in conjunction with the other uh, tools as well and uh, you will have a good shot for uh, determining the profitable trade while trading with the train so that's why this is one of the widely used uh, indicator output value all you have to do is uh, put this output value uh, in uh, multiple uh, uh, you can uh, do that simply by taking this output value for any if and else statement or uh, for any calculation suppose if you want to use it in a logical part then all you have to do is uh, take the output value and uh, compare it with the other parameter which can be other uh, which can be other uh, t3 value the value for different uh, time period or with a different look back period or it can be the price action where the last hourly candle close is so you can design and define these uh, input values here you can do the comparison by putting it in the logical format as you might be aware uh, the values we get for output differ with the settings 
on which side the calculation is being done, bit side or DAS side, makes a change in the output value. And uh, with that, the applied price also have an impact, a large impact per se. I will try to explain to you on the chart itself. Now, this T3 indicator is being calculated on the close price. If we change this to reflect the high price, then it will shift on the higher side. If we change this to reflect the low price, then this will shift on the lower side. Similarly, for other uh, combinations, you will have different uh, output values. If we use the median price, it has shifted slightly upward. If we use the weighted close price, it has shifted a bit of downside, a bit on the downside. Okay. So, I would suggest that you do extensive here, the trial and error uh, thing, and then extensive testing as well. See what kind of setup will uh, yield you better result and uh, nothing better to determine that, to find that but to do the extensive testing after designing and implementing various uh, algorithmic strategies in the Visual J Forex platform and then running them on the historical tester in the J Forex platform. So that's it from my side for uh, today's session. In uh, tomorrow's session, we will be back with a new indicator, which will be, of course, based on the moving averages as we are doing a moving average series. and. Uh, I think a couple of sessions will uh, be required till we finish this moving average series and move on to the mathematical indicators. Till then, keep experimenting, don't give up, try to figure out a profitable statement. Have a fabulous time ahead. Goodbye.